South Carolina, or rather Arizona State, as they step in. So here we're underway. And Mark Van Beaver stands in. Out of South Carolina. Batting 375 in the series. We have a no ball, two strike count. They're playing in fairly straight around to the left. The wind tonight is blowing out into right field, and we get a chance. This is some stadium. It's big. A ball. One ball, two strikes. The plate umpire is Doug Cosey, the first base umpire, Gus Steiner, who, by the way, is the only umpire I've ever seen with only one arm. We'll talk about him later on. C.J. Mitchell at second, former Major League umpire Al Foreman at third. A ball, 2-2. Two -two. It's 343 down the line, 370 in the slots, 420 straight away. A home run to left field tonight will be tough to hit if the wind keeps going to right. This with his breaking ball. Jerry Vasquez, he's 11 and 2 on the year. He has Brent Humphrey at third, Mike Henderson at short, Bob Horner at second, Chris Nyman at first. Driven left field deep. Steve Michael, the left fielder, turns there. One out. Yeah, Wynn really held that ball up. Uh, Bob, uh, Mark Van Bever hit it good, but uh, Michael had no trouble with it. Uh, he's a little guy, and they were playing him in quite shallow, but he got back in plenty of time. The outfield, as we said, is Steve Michael on the left, Rick Peterson center, and Hubie Brooks on right. As the telecast progresses, we'll identify more and more for you who they are, where they're from. One out as Mookie Wilson stands in. He's a junior. The center fielder bunted and hit by his own batted ball, but while within the box, strike one on the foul. This guy could fly. He was drafted by the Mets uh, very high up. He's uh, quite a prospect. Mookie's only batting at uh, 368. <laughs> We got a ball and a strike. One out and on. No score. Top of the first. This is it for the championship in Division One. Arizona State and South Carolina. Good off speed pitch there. A ball, two strikes. They'll have to throw him out. That'll be a strikeout and a system to put out. He keeps it the scorecard. It's hard for me to tell sometimes. I think that was a slider. Watch it again here. Uh, we might pick it up here, Robbie. Yeah, that's a breaking yeah. ball. Might even been a curveball. I'll tell you one thing. You got to get that ball down to first. He can run. Yes, sir. And they got it there. Good move there by young Bando, who's a brother of Sal Bando. As we said as time progresses throughout the telecast, right now you're looking at Chuck McLean, the left fielder. Val, he's a young man you'll see a little later on, hit a very big inside the park home run in the 10th inning that eliminated Baylor and kept South Carolina in the ball game. Yeah, when you lose two games, you go home, and these both clubs have lost one, and one of them will be a two-game loser tonight. Here we ball, two strike count, two down, no score. Now the sun's shining here, and you got shadow and sunlight, and it's a right field that's very tough right now. That's hit high, right center, going back Hubie Brooks, and calling for it, center fielder Rick Peters. That ball carried out there pretty well. Wind blowing that way. I don't think uh, UB Brooks saw it very well. I don't either. He broke over to the right like he was going to pick it up out of there like it was nothing to it. And so the inning is over in one, two, three fashion. It's the fact that they've been here before 64, 65, 67, 69, 72, 73. Don't, uh, doesn't help any of these players, but 75 and 76, a couple of them know what it's all about. This boy hitting here, I was out here in 75 and Peters was on that ball club. Uh, they lost out. South Carolina was here also. They've had three or four boys uh, on the team this year that were here in 75. They came in second. Texas won it in 1975. So now Rick Peters standing in, the center fielder. They play way up tight at third on him. They have McLean in left, Mookie Wilson in center, uh, Don Repture in right. 
for uh, South Carolina. Bart Murphy, Greg Johnson, Mark Van Beaver, and John Hinkle, the infield, reading third, short, second, and first with Lewis and Long, the battery. A ball, two strike, one count to Rick Peters. He uh, is batting in the series at 5.32. Foul. There's a situation. The coach down there. What's the rule on college coaching, uh, Robin? You can only have one coach on the lines. Who, you gotta, is, who is a regular yeah, head coach. Assistant coach or the head coach can be on lines. The other, other one's handled by a player. Rick Peters laid off. That to change up nicely. Ball three strike two. He's a threat to go if he gets on. I'll tell you that. Now third baseman Bart Murphy has dropped back. That's a smack foul down the first base side. One thing about the clubs being out here, there's very few of them, though, they're out here year after year. In college, of course, they leave after four years. Some of them leave after three years. So you might be out here as a team for years, but you're still the same young guys, and it's a lot of pressure out here, Bob. Uh, nobody has that much of an advantage, really. South Carolina was here in 75 also. That's a wrap towards second. Nice play by Van Beaver. He short hopped that ball very nicely. Rick Peters retired, one away in the Arizona State first inning. The game is scoreless. And the batter will be shortstop Mike Henderson. Mike uh, batting in the series at 381. Now, when we say the series, remember both of these ball clubs have been here for a while and uh, they stand at three and one. And it's a double elimination tournament, as Robin explained to you. And so Mike Henderson, a senior at Arizona State, stands in. And they'll tighten up around the third base side at him, protect against that swinging bunt. But he rips that aluminum hanger down the right side. And there's the first aluminum batsman we've had, you can tell from the sound. Yeah, it makes a different noise, but the boys like it. Not a legal bat, by the way, in the major leagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, little League, boys, boys baseball, and college, collegiate baseball, it's, it's available. Now here's Jamie Allen, the designated hitter. You'll see more about him later on. And if he happens to get into the ball game, Robert, we got a right-handed <laughs> Allen Roboski yeah, in our hand. He's something. He's the designated hitter. They use that also in collegiate uh, baseball, batting in the third spot. And batting at 364 in the series. He's from Yakima, Washington. A freshman. Pretty good move there by Jim Lewis. They're playing uh, Allen straight away. Boy, he has a good move. Uh, a lot of your college pitchers are now coming up with good moves. There's a lot of running in college baseball. Uh, a lot of boys take off and steal. Well, that one was ruled outside. One ball, no strikes. Two out. Jamie's one of the few freshmen in the lineup tonight. He's quite a good looking ball player. He's a pitcher and a hitter. Hey, there's one that he picked off to pick his own man off, and going into second is Mike Henderson, and we'll have a throwing error on the pitcher, Jim Lewis. He really picked off his own first baseman there. Yeah, he got it inside the bag too much, and Hinkle couldn't hang on to it. Now we're going to have Jamie Allen stand in here with a two ball, no strike count, and let's see just how much. You'll find out one thing about college baseball. They, uh, with uh, one out, uh, he'd be going swinging away. But with none out, this he'd be trying to move that man over to third. Sure as heck. Free enough. Any of these fellas playing? You tried to recruit down there at South Florida, Robbie? No, and this was my first year of doing that this uh, past season. So I haven't been involved with any of these boys. Uh, You'll be after them in the fall. I you? would take a lot of them. There are some good-looking players out here. Oh my! They uh, there are 11 pros drafted uh, drafted by the pros in uh, this uh, finale here. That is, they're available to play. Three and two. Good pitch that time by Lewis. Uh, Randy Martz, a pitcher. Mookie Wilson, 
Jerry Vasquez, who, Vasquez, who's pitching in this game. Rick Peters, who's playing. Mark Van Beaver, who's playing. Stuck him out. This first inning is any indication, Brother Roberts. We're looking ourselves at a pretty good game here. Yeah, that's a good, that's a slider. Lewis throws a lot of them. You can see it break right at the end there. He fooled Allen with it. So uh, Jimmy Lewis picks up his first strikeout, and that'll bring up uh, second baseman Bob Horner. This is the guy that's the home run hitter. He hit 22 in a regular season. He's hit two here in uh, Omaha. He's quite a hitter, they say. He's got an average of 394 with it, 87 runs batted in over the season. I'd have to say he can really pop. And they had another good one who's uh, not able to play. This Hutch, uh, Dave Hutchins, who was. Injured and uh, fortunately did not lose his life. Man, there's a swing if I ever saw one. It blew the air out of the infield. A ball one, strike one count. We have two down, a runner out at second base, and Mike Henderson, no score, first inning. Arizona State Sun Devils against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. They said he did. A ball and two strikes. Boy, this guy's got a good motion. Takes just a little off it. Jimmy Lewis. Double. Is it two fine baseball teams, Bob? This is uh, going to be quite a battle. Yep. There certainly are all of that. Arizona State had a battle, you know, to stay in here. Uh, South Carolina was 3 0 coming into the finale. Drew a bye. And did he throw that one through there? So he picks up his second strikeout. And it's no runs and one hit, one error, and one left. And we have gone through one inning of play here in the 31st annual College World Series. The 28th year has been played here. All right, we go now to the second inning. The game is scoreless, and this gentleman standing in is uh, Don Repsher, R-E-P-S-H-E-R, -E a senior. The right fielder bouncing down toward third. Brent Humphrey throws him out, one away. Now they'll have the designated hitter for South Carolina, Steve King. Where did you bat your designated hitter? In what order in the lineup, Robbie? Well, it varied. Uh, a lot of times fifth, uh, sometimes lower. It depended uh, on whether I had a right-handed pitcher going again. I had a good left-handed pinch hitter, uh, designated hitter that I used that I respected a little more and put him up a little higher in the lineup. But most, it's kind of fun to have it as a coach. Uh-oh. That ball's tagged, and the wind's got it. It's going deep, way back, but however, there's a gentleman out there with a glove, and his name is Hoobie Brooks, and he's got it. Yeah, he got that, under it a little bit. Yep. Looked to me like for a second he was going to get it out of there, but he just didn't quite get the ping he wanted. You're under <laughs> just enough, huh? 22. Robbie, that's kind of what you call a little bit of a riser, wasn't Yeah, it? that ball got him a little bit, but the King had a good rip at it. When you let a pitch go, could you pretty well tell whether or not it was gone if the guy was swinging or not? Well, not the ball they hit to the opposite field, but yeah. the ball they pulled, you can pretty well, you stop at the hitter, you see his whole swing, you know he's going to damage you up a little bit. And you go, uh-oh, huh? I went oh, oh many times. Yes, you threw a couple out of the park, <laughs> you know, but you won an awful lot of 20 gamers, too, six of those. John Hinkle, the senior now. First baseman, Creams one to deep left. It's going to be extra bases off the wall out there. And Hinkle has the first hit off Vasquez. And South Carolina's Gamecocks have a runner with two down in John Hinkle. John Hinkle didn't play their last ball game. He slid home and he got hurt. Here it is. It looks like a hanging breaking ball. And he really ripped it into that wind and he hit uh, just short of the fence in left field. Fifth double season. Now that's his uh, first of the series, his fifth double of the season. And uh, fine play there. You knew uh, Michael who fielded that. Now we got Bart Murphy coming up, the third baseman. He's just a junior. Murphy uh, batting at uh, 154 in the series. Two down, no score, second inning. That's the first hit surrendered by Jerry Vasquez. V is in victory, A-S-Q-E-Z. They play this hitter 
Murphy very shallow and around to right. And he wraps at a one hop. Nice play by Mike Henderson digging that one out of his tummy. That baby could have eaten him up on the in between hop, but he stayed with it. Murphy hit the ball well, but sometimes they go right at him. No All right, no one runs and a hit. No errors. No errors. And a man left. And we go now to the bottom half of the second inning, and there is no score. He's better looking than Sal, too. I heard you tell him that. He <laughs> laughed and said, I agree. <laughs> All right, Chris Bando, the catcher. One hop down to second baseman. Van Beaver fires the Hinkle, one away. One out in the second inning, Arizona State, the home team, no score. Chris is a junior. He'll be back next year. Uh -huh. Here comes now a sophomore by the name of Steve Michael. He hit one out of here the other night. He jumped on it pretty good. Got a pretty good swing. Ball one. Pitcher now is Jimmy Lewis. He's 11 and 5. He's given up one hit. One down, none on in the second inning. Arizona State going. Nice let up. Got to the outside corner. Ball one, strike one. Looked like he just turned it over just a nick. Stevie Michael. The third baseman, Bart Murphy, does a lot of what the late Don Hook used to do. He moves all over the place with that left-hand batter up there. He comes up, he goes back, he jumps around as though perhaps somehow or other he can agitate the, the hitter, get his mind or his eyes off it. And it's hit high right center, going back for it. Mookie Wilson running with that speed, leaping. Does he have it? What a play! Call a doctor. Look at this catch. Boy, replays are wonderful when you're having a play like this, Bob. Watch this guy jump. I thought that ball was out of the ballpark. What gets me is he doesn't worry about the wall. No. Look at the way he made that play. That, that, that's it, huh? That's a World Series play, that baby. Why, you better believe it. They'd put that in the World Series of the Major <laughs> Leagues and they'd talk about that forever. They'll talk about here, oh, what a play, what a play by Mookie Wilson. The batter is uh, Chris Nyman. Nyman, the first baseman, is the fellow who was playing catch with Dave Hutchins and accidentally uh, hit him in the nose and uh, had a massive hemorrhage and Lucky to be around. He's here now, thank goodness, and he's all right. He wouldn't normally be playing because he's a magnificent baseball player for Arizona State. That takes quite a player out of their lineup not to have him in there. Nyman's having a big series, too. He had three hits uh, last night against Southern Illinois, and uh, he's a fine player, but he was a second string man to that injury. Ball three, strike one, two down. I'll guarantee you one thing if Mookie Wilson doesn't come up with that tomato that Michael hit, Michael could chug the third. Yeah, that was a triple. Oh, my. Long foul. Boy. How'd you know that? Well, I knew <laughs> You've seen it. Years, <laughs> I guess, and I know. <laughs> Get out of that one without any apple on my face, didn't I, Robin? <laughs> Robin Roberts here with yours truly, Bob Prince, enjoying this tremendous display of baseball in Omaha, Nebraska. Look out, he lit up the lights on Broadway. I'm not sure what that was, if we have a replay. Was. Yeah, that was, no, I, I thought it was a strike, but I'm not sure whether it was a breaking ball or not. It really broke, I think. Well, he popped it in there nonetheless, and that is the third strike out to Jim Lewis. Listen to the hand for Mookie. Yeah, they might be. That would have been their second loss mm -hmm. if they had lost to Arizona State like they did later on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we go now into the third. The game is scoreless. Johnny Long standing in. He's a junior. He's the catcher. Jerry Vasquez is on the mound. He were getting a well-pitched game, and oh, if we sure. had a play by Mookie, oh, oh, what a play. When he comes up, we won't have to tell you who he is. Mookie Wilson. Batting number two in the South Carolina Gamecock lineup. That's a loop to left. Can they get to it? No, they set. John Long gets a little bleeder out in the left field, a parachute. Those are the kind that base hits have used to just take turn Robin Roberts right around and got it one little gray hair. No, it didn't bother me. Uh, they used to hit a lot of line drives right at him. I figured that was somebody else was handling that, not yeah. me. 
All right, now we have Greg Johnson, the shortstop, standing in. Bunted through it, as you saw. Greg Johnson. He's a freshman boy. Hmm? I think he and Allen are the only two freshmen in the starting lineups I think tonight. You're right. He batted. He's batted uh, 200 thus far in the series. The bunt is foul. Now he's down to 0 2. How often do you work on bunting? And uh, you know, you with a designated hitter, now would you be less inclined to work on bunting, uh, Robbie, than you would with a pitcher in there? No, bunting in college baseball, you use it an awful lot more than you do in mm -hmm. the pros, and it's something that the boys do very well when they work on an awful mm -hmm. lot. And most coaches do that. They they haven't bunted a lot. I'm surprised he didn't get them over, but that will happen on occasion. A ball. Now, oh. ladies and gentlemen, yes, Robin. It's tough to bunt a guy that's throwing as hard as uh, Vasquez is throwing now. It, it, it's not as easy as it looks. A ball, two strikes. And a high bouncer to first. It's the same thing. He got the out, so it's got the fortunate high chopper. It's not the sacrifice. Three unassisted. And in the second goes long. There's no score as South Carolina's Gamecocks are trying to crack through here. Now, South Carolina arrived here by virtue of uh, in the Atlantic Regional, uh, they were able to beat South Alabama. Or South Alabama beat them uh, seven to six, but then they came along to go after them. Bouncer toward third. They looked the runner back and throw for the out. And let me tell you something. Van Beaver can run. Oh, 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 he can run his right. Bob. Humphrey hung on that ball almost too long. Yes, he did. Now, South Carolina got here by beating, uh, after losing to South Alabama, they beat Eastern Carolina. Then uh, they turned around and came back and beat South Alabama, and then hauled off and beat Wake Forest, and uh, take it back. They split, but that was just enough to get South Carolina in, and they did it. Foul back. They uh, worked that double elimination, I guess, in the regional playoffs, too. Right. And so they South Carolina has been hanging by a fingernail you might say getting up into this situation. No they handled Wake Forest yeah. twice in a row there. Uh, they yeah, and that's what put them in there. Yeah. Right. I think it's kind of unusual to use however the aluminum bat to try to bunt. Robin what do you think of that. I never thought of it. Uh, <laughs> you might be right. Maybe <laughs> maybe but that would be kind of a giveaway though if you walked up with a wood bat. <laughs> I guess it would, but I mean, in an obvious bunt situation, I'm going to try it. This is Mookie Wilson, uh -oh. and there's the pop, and the shallow right, is it? Well, he hit it much better than I thought, but uh, Hubie Brooks is back, and he's got it, and that retires the side. So the failure to be able to bunt a man up really didn't hurt because uh, they got him up there anyhow, and then uh, Jerry Vasquez just settled down and nailed him. No runs, a hit, no errors, and a man left. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the bottom of the third, and this is a whale of a ball game with no score. Okay, now into the bottom of the third in a fast-moving game and scoreless, being well pitched and one sensational play by Mookie out there, Mookie Wilson. Standing in now is Brent Humphrey, the third baseman. Humphrey's from Torres, California, huh? And in uh, batted at uh, 452 during the season. Weak chopper to second base. Dan Beaver for him now. Hubie Brooks, the right fielder. He's a junior. Hubie's from Compton, California. Arizona State has boys from all over the West mm -hmm. there. They, uh, they're they a well-respected baseball school, and those kids all like to go down there. And yet you were talking with the uh, coach at uh, Southern Illinois, and they, uh, they were able to keep most of their players because you said they like the cold weather, and they stay there. Well, they have a lot of good boys uh, all over this country, Bob. Mm -hmm. If you just recruit the right ones, you're a good coach. Mm -hmm. Hubie Brooks on a foul. Tell us about uh, Arizona State's coach Jimmy Brock. Oh, he's something. He's been out here uh, five or six times. He's never won the championship though. They've won it. They won it under Bobby uh, Winkles, who's now coaching Oakland. But uh, Jim Brock's never won it. He's looking forward tonight to trying to come up with that. He gets fooled on this one. He's out in front of this so much he doesn't know what to do with the bat. So drop it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's still got a cut. Remind me of Chico Fernandez. Uh huh. He used to do that all the time. Oh man, did that thing slide in there? Lewis is fast and got the quick breaking ball tonight. 
This is his fourth, Roddy. Yeah, it's a good pitch. You can see it really breaks sharp. It's not quite out over the plate as much as he liked, but it got the inside mm -hmm. corner, and uh, it was just enough to fool Brooks. Now Rick Peters up for his second at bat. No score. Two down. Arizona State batting here. Jim Lewis, 11 and 5 on the year. We've had a sensational play in the ball game. Uh, made by Mookie Wilson on the ball hit by Steve Michael the Mookie ran through the fence to get it one strike there's been one hit in the ball game by Arizona State it was a single back in the first inning by Mike Henderson he reached second on a pickoff throwing error and that's as far as anybody from Arizona, Arizona State's been able to get so uh, now Bart Murphy's coming up tight on uh, Rick Peters then drops back he moves all over the place. Rick Peters is from Compton also. He and Brooks came together, I guess. Neither team has had a runner past second, although there have been two out there for South Carolina. The double by Hinkle and the single by Long, and then the advance to second on a ground out. Nobody's seen third. Look at old Murph running around. He's the third baseman. You've got to remember the late Don Hook, Robbie. That's what he did all the time. He used to figure that bothered everybody. That's popped right in the shallow right, and it's going to be a base hit. So Rick Peters has the second hit. Now, would you suppose with two out, Mr. Rick Peters might be a threat to try to see if he can run a little bit? Shortstop. The boot. He hit it right on the end. There's another one of those boops you say us pitchers worry about. Mm -hmm. You know, watching Murphy play in like that remind me of Rose in the series when Mickey Rivers hit. He kind of psyched Mickey out. Remember, he got in there the whole game. i tell you, Peter's got to watch it. This Lewis has got some move. I'll tell you another thing, though. Peter stole 47 bases and only out of 53 attempts. So that's this is a good battle. Let's keep our eyes on this one, huh? Only caught him six times. Good move. Who do they steal on, Robbie? The pitcher, the catcher, or both? Well, the catcher makes a perfect throw. It's hard to steal, but unless they have that good throw or any kind of a jump off a pitcher will give the runner a real advantage I, I know for myself I was terrible with it I there he goes and uh, the throw is there but not in not high low enough so Peters has picked up his stolen base that's the first steal of this championship game there's a fine example of what I was talking about if we watch this, Bob, if the throw had have been right on the bag, exactly. which is hard to explain, you know, uh, yeah. expect all. See, it was high, and the guy had to bring it down. If it had yeah. been right on the bag, he'd have been on, and he did have a good jump, though. That he did. Now, with two down, no score, Mike Henderson, who singled, lines to left for the base hit. There's going to be a play. Here comes McLean. Yeah, they're they're going to hold him up, and they cut it off. Now they've got him picked off first, and they're going to hold him there. They go to second. They're going to drop the ball. They go to first. Out. Oh. But the run scored. The run scored. The run got in ahead of the man picked off over at first base. Henderson is out. He drove a drive to left for a base hit. Then they got forced up. And what happened is when they dropped the ball out there at second base when he handcuffed him, when they threw back to try to pick him off at first, the runner, Peters, had broken for the plate and scored before the third out was recorded. It was not a force out. So therefore, the run counts, and Arizona State takes the lead at the end of three of one and nothing. We'll be back right now after a look at what's in store on HBO. In which uh, Henderson singles to the left field. There's no error charged. So I think they're going to have to give Mike Henderson a run batted in. No, I don't think so. He well, wasn't coming in. I know he wasn't, but here's the thing. He scored on the play and with no error charge, and we'll get to that in a moment. We'll get back to it, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a real intriguing play. This is Chuck McLean standing in. He flied to center first time up. Arizona State here in the fourth inning is leading now one to nothing. As the South Carolina Gamecocks come with McLean, Repture, and Stevie King. That's a line drive for the out to second base. One away. And Vasquez has his atom ball working right at somebody. Remember what I told you about those blue pits? There's yes, a line sir. drive right at him. All right, now Don Repture is standing in. He's a senior. Ellicott City, Maryland, huh? Well, you figure you must be a Baltimore Oriole fan. You figure. You're not quite sure. 
a ball outside. I'll tell you, we're going to have to discuss next time Robbie and I get on here, and we may have to send down for a decision on that play <laughs> because uh, they rule no error. And it's and uh, you can't call it a steal. And he did stop, like Robbie said, at third. The ball handcuffed the second baseman. It became a multiple action play. They got the guy at, at first base for the third out, but the runner scored from third before the third out occurred, and there was not a force play. And if you're not confused by now, well, then we'll further confuse you when we get the official scores ruling on it. Ball three and strike one to Don Repture. In any event, the action was wicked and fast, and the uh, Sun Devils have gone in front one nothing at the end of three. The only thing a question is whether they give Mike Henderson a run batted in. And it's a tricky one. Don Repture pops a foul. Is it available for Bando? Yep. It seems to be. And he stays there. Two away. Is a replay on that foul pop. You notice Bando turns right around. Most of those balls work their way back towards the infield, and they all know that. They practice them a lot. You see it coming back this way. He had no trouble with it. If they don't know it, they don't catch very long. <laughs> no, <do> they? <laughs> now, they drop about eight feet from him. All right, you had a great catcher for you, Stan Lopata. There's a foul to the left. Steve King, a designated hitter, fired to right field his first time up. Arizona State leading one to nothing. But there was a catcher by the name of Edwards, I think, for Brooklyn, had a funny of a crook neck. You remember Bruce him? Edwards. Bruce, Bruce Edwards. Edwards. And I used to wonder whether he was ever going to catch him, and he never ever seemed to drop them. Foul tip. It's amazing the amount of things, and Robin Roberts will probably come our way, and we hope we don't bore you. But, ladies and gentlemen, after all, I broadcast uh, 29, 30 years in Major League Baseball. Robbie pitched 18 years. He's in the Hall of Fame, and we see things down here that remind us of things, and we know it's being seen all over the country. So we might talk about certain ball players from time to time. There's a little linger to right going back forward to Hubie Brooks, and he came back and then came on to get it as the wind knocked it down. And uh, he was able to grab it and uh, get that sinking liner, and that retired the side. Three up and three down. Now, Robin Roberts, while well, we have a moment, because we're going to have to send down uh, somebody to get some information on this. Let's explain one thing. Mike Henderson was the batter, and the runner at second base was Rick Peters. And uh, Henderson singled, as you saw, to left field. And Peters went to third and stopped right there. Now, in the meantime, Henderson had gone too far wide at first. So the ball came in from Chuck McLean, cut out by the third baseman, fired to the first baseman. First baseman threw it to the second baseman. That handcuffed him. That was where the moment that the runner Peters saw, uh, I guess, the shortstop. Really no, it was, uh, was Van it? Bever. Van, yeah. uh, Van yeah. Bever bobbled the ball. He broke for home. Mm -hmm. Now they go to first base, and they get him. But when they get him, the doggone uh, runner had already scored. Now they haven't ruled an error, so why they must have to give him a run batted in. You know, I'm going to go downstairs Will and you? find out okay. just for you. All right. I can't believe that. I know you can't. And my golly, if they don't answer you, Robin Roberts, they aren't going to answer anybody. But anyhow, no matter whether it's an RBI or not, Arizona State Sun Devils are in front of South Carolina's Gamecocks in a thrilling ball game so far, one to nothing. I'll tell you the way it's going as we move into the bottom of the fourth. This is a heartbreaker for either team to lose. Fly ball to right field, settling under. See how that wind grabs that ball a little bit, and there's one away. So Jamie Allen is retired on a fly to right, and that'll bring up Sophomore Bob Horner. Bob Horner is from Glendale, Arizona. He was stuck out his first time up. Arizona State leading one to nothing. Pop foul, no play. This is a magnificent stadium, Rosenblatt Stadium, Omaha, Nebraska. Lights have been on since the start of the game. In this, the 31st annual College World Series and the 27th year it has been played in this beautiful city. It's 3.43 down the lines in this stadium. It is 4.20 straight away. This is indeed a major league ballpark. 
It's longer in distance than most Major League Parks. Pop foul. This could be playable by Bando or by uh, John Long. And nice one hand grab up against the rail. And Johnny Long has it. And there are two down. Let's watch it again as he spins back up against the railing. The batter there, Bob Horner, going to be retired. As Long jumped in there nicely to grab it. Don't nice, you, Robin nice Roberts, play. did you get a ruling? For those of you keeping an official scorebook, it was a fielder's choice. No RBI. Well, all right. We're going to say a fielder's choice. Well, I don't, I'm not going to argue with that ruling because uh, that's a chop to second base by Bando, and he's out. He runs like a catcher. <laughs> <laughs> he's another Joe Torre. You know, he, he, did, pounds lighter, he huh? did look like Joe running down there. Didn't he know? Yeah. Sure did. Three yeah, up I, and three down here. And we've got ourselves one on the front burner that's a dandy. And at the end of uh, four innings of play, ladies and gentlemen, the score, Arizona State one, South Carolina nothing. Okay, there was a fine conversation with Robbie Roberts. Robin and uh, Roberts and Bob Prince here sending you this exciting championship College World Series game between the Gamecocks of South Carolina who trailed nothing to one to the Sun Devils of Arizona State out of Tempe. John Hinkle doubled. And he slams the drive straight away center. Rick Peters drops back. You can tell he'd been around there before. One away. Now that's three. Let's see. That's seven in a row retired by uh, Jerry Vasquez now. He's pitching great. You know, mm -hmm. Lewis is pretty. This is a good ball game. Bobby. Oh, it certainly is. It just a, uh, I tell you one thing. If they don't bobble that ball just slightly there in the third inning and they get the throw over at first base, they get that man out before Peters is able to score. We're still nothing, nothing. That's just the difference in this game. And we've seen a whale of a play also by uh, Steve Michael on the ball hit by Steve Michael by uh, Mookie Wilson. He took a triple. He ran through the wall out there to get that ball back in the second inning. Bart Murphy. He uh, blooped. He uh, grounded to short on a one hopper back in the second inning. Slam for a base hit to left. He really racked into that. One. That is hit number three off Vasquez. Murphy's hit both balls well. The shortstop yep. handled that other one he hit, but that one was base Catcher. hit all the way. Bart, by the way, is from Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, Bobby Richardson recruited that fellow. Must have. He preached to him a little bit and got him down there. All right, Johnny Long. And they were hitting and running, or running and hitting. I'd say hitting and running there in that particular case. And uh, Bart Murphy will have to come back. See if he touches first base. Yep, you touch after a foul ball. There's a reason why. You'd be amazed how Major League Baseball players find holes in the rule book. <laughs> and uh, there was one found in 1960, you wouldn't believe, that brought about that rule you just saw right there. Johnny Long, the batter. Weak tapper up the first base side. It's going to be a fair ball. And on the out into second goes Murphy. Fine play by uh, Bando reacting nicely. Well, that's why that double line is down the first baseline for a play just like that. Long is supposed to stay in foul territory on that play to give the catcher a shot. I'm not sure he stayed in there, but when the play's not hindered like that, they don't say anything about it. But if the ball hit his shoulder, they might have had a real. Yeah, they uh, had a rhubarb. Yeah. This is Greg Johnson now with a runner at second, two down. And don't think for one, oh, that caught the bare hand. That had to hurt. Bando. They're going to call their trainer out and take a check at him a minute. That caught him on the meat hand. That's too bad. You don't like to see that. That, uh, that had to hurt. The bullpen is busy out there. Jim Brock's like not taking any you. chances. No. He's got the left hand and a right hand warming up. Spray a little bit here for a thing. I was going to say about that rule 
Back in 1960, Don Hoke said to me, if I ever take a long lead off the base, <laughs> like third, after a foul ball, you'd be ready for it. And uh, sure enough, one time in a ball game, and that's the year the Pirates won the championship of the world, he took an 88-foot lead after a foul ball. And the umpire said, what are you doing? He said, this is my lead. Tell, give the pitcher a ball and tell him to go at it. And the umpire says, there's no way you can do that. And Hoke says, show me in the rule book where you can. Well, the umpire says, it might not be in the rule book, but there is a rule that says you can't make a travesty of the game. And I know doggone well as you watch Bando throw here to see if his hands are right. He says, I know doggone well there's no reason for you to be able to take an 88-foot lead, so you go on back to third. That night, president of the league then, Warren Giles, put the rule in that after a foul ball, you had to go back and touch the base. Now, you know, Robbie, only guys like Hoke, Mock, Solly Hemus, the two five, the two fifty hitters think those things up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Greg Johnson. Uh, Solly will be mad at you. He wasn't Who? a two. Solly Hemus wasn't no, a Solly was a good hitter. There's a chopper down first. They better it will not go foul, and there it is. That's the difference. That's the one time that uh, Greg Johnson wanted that thing to curl out foul. It did not, and he's out unassisted. And so the uh, inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. And we are now going into the bottom half of the fifth inning of a whale of a ball game. Arizona State leading South Carolina one to nothing. All right, we're looking now at. Uh, Steve Michael standing in. Jim Lewis pitching. One strike. Michael was out on that play in which, back in the second inning, uh, Mookie Wilson ran through the center field wall to grab it. A magnificent catch, as great a catch as you'll see anywhere. I don't care what anybody says. You can't make him any better than that. He really crashed the center field wall. That saved a run. Foul. Arizona State had to get through the Rocky Mountain regionals. They were played, by the way, at Tempe. Whether that was an edge for them, I don't know, but uh, they did. And uh, Arizona State uh, defeated Fullerton of California, then defeated uh, Washington State, and then defeated Washington State again, and thus uh, earned their way in to the College World Series. Two balls, two strikes, to lead off batter Michael. Up the middle, over to the left comes shortstop Johnson. Nice play on a short hop. One out. Good play. Excellent play. Had the short hop and throw off balance. That's why he's playing shortstop right yep. there. Bobby. Watch him. Yeah, short hopped him, but he stayed right with it. Put the rule in that after a foul ball, you had to go back and touch the base. Now, you know, Robbie, only guys like Hoke, Mock, Solly Hemus, the two five, the two fifty hitters think those things up. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's Greg Johnson. Uh, Solly will be mad at you. He wasn't Oop. a two. Solly he must wasn't no, a two. Solly was a good hitter. There's a chopper down first. They better it will not go foul, and there it is. That's the difference. That's the one time that uh, Greg Johnson wanted that thing to curl out foul. It did not, and he's out unassisted. And so the uh, inning is over. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one right. left. And we are now going into the bottom half of the fifth inning of a whale of a ball game. Arizona State leading South Carolina one to nothing. All right, we're looking now at uh, Steve Michael standing in. Jim Lewis pitching. One strike. Michael was out on that play in which, back in the second inning, uh, Mookie Wilson ran through the center field wall to grab it. A magnificent catch, as great a catch as you'll see anywhere. I don't care what anybody says. You can't make him any better than that. He really crashed the center field wall. That saved a run. Foul. Arizona State had to get through the Rocky Mountain regionals. They were played, by the way, at Tempe. Whether that was an edge for them, I don't know, but uh, they did. And uh, Arizona State uh, defeated Fullerton of California, then defeated uh, Washington State and then defeated Washington State again. And thus uh, earned their way in to the College World Series. Two balls, two strikes, to lead off batter Michael. Up the middle, over to the left comes shortstop Johnson. Nice play on a short hop. One out. Good play. Excellent play. Had the short hop and throw off balance. That's why he's playing shortstop right yep. there. Bobby. Chris 
Watch him. Yeah, short hopped him, but he stayed right with it. Look at this. Yes, sir. Got rid of it quick. Another thing, he took his time once. He, I mean, not his time, but he set himself to let it go, Robbie. I think a lot of guys would have tried to throw off balance uh, and might not have made the play. Now, Chris Nyman, the senior, standing in. One to nothing score, Arizona State, one out. They got their run in the third inning. Chris Nyman, by the way, Rancho Cordova, California. I bet you died, uh, Rod Dado and some of those fellas out of UCLA and Southern California and all. I wonder how he got away. You know, he's the only guy I ever heard of from Rancho Cordova. Yeah. Well, bet me everybody on the West Coast. Looking in would know. A ball, two strike, two count, one out, one to nothing. Arizona State, fifth inning. Mm. Brother, Jim Lewis has just picked up strikeout number five. 17. Watch this baby. I think that's a breaking ball also. Yeah. Mm. He got a late breaker. Yeah. You don't think he? Uh, no such. They don't throw that. Oh no! That oh, kind of no. pitch in the no, not in college, college ball, do they? No. This is uh, Brent Humphrey now, who bounced out to second base. His first time up, one to nothing. Arizona Sun Devils leading the game. Cox of South Carolina. Oh, off the glove of the pitcher. Beautiful play, shortstop. Can't be held into the dugout. They'll get another base. All right, now that it seemed to me was deflected by Lewis. If not by Lewis, it hit the mound. Let's get a look. No, nope, nope, he, he hit didn't. the mound. Yeah. Now here's where he made the great play, but this is the one time he should have eaten it. Yeah, he was off balance, but. And into the dirt. Now, let's see what they're gonna rule. They're ruling air all the way. Gracious sakes. You don't mean that, do they? Stay off the scores now. No, wait a minute. No, they I think they rule hit air. Let's take a look. Arizona State on the board has four hits, so that should be a hit, but that's it, and then an error. All right. Okay. I agree with that. I do too. I don't think he could have picked him up the way the ball was uh, played. So it's a rule of the base hit to short, and then charge Greg Johnson with a throwing error, allowing Humphrey to move into second and bring up Hubie Brooks with a 2 0 count. Oh, did he catch the outside corner? A ball, two strikes. This kid has a great, great move. I'll tell you, right now, it's heartbreak alley for either pitcher, Lewis or Vasquez, if they lose this game. To third, fine play, Murphy. And that'll get him out of the inning. So it's no runs, a hit, an error, and a man left. And uh, one hit. That takes care of that situation and the score, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of five shows Arizona State out in front by the score of uh, one to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move along here into the sixth inning, we have a ball game. It's one to nothing in favor of Arizona State. And the Gamecocks of South Carolina send up Mark Van Beaver. Mark seeing if he can get something going here now. Slams a drive left field coming up. Left fielder Michael, one out. So Van Beaver now is 0 for 3. He's a senior. Dan Beaver, by the way, is out of Melbourne, Florida. I would imagine any of these Floridians that they have in here. You'd think Maryland will all be trying like the daylights to keep them around here. 
We have an unusual one here. This Randy March from uh, South Carolina went down here on a football scholarship. All America it was selected number one, won the Gomez Plate for being the outstanding college player in the country. He's a pitcher. Elizabethville, uh, Pennsylvania. Just outside of Harrisburg, the state capital. Here's Mookie Wilson now. He's made the play, of, as far as I'm concerned, of the series. If there was a better one, I don't know where it was, unless it was on I-79 somewhere south of Melbourne, Florida. <laughs> Mookie made one the other night that wasn't bad. You remember he yep. dove and caught one coming in? Yep, he did. And then he was involved in another funny play, and you'll see him a little later on. Whoa, knocked down by Vasquez. He might have to eat this one. He's safe. There's a one-armed umpire out there that's doing a whale of a job, let me tell you. And did this kid get hurt? That's what about it. Watch it again now. Let's see where he got hit, Bob. Oh, looked like it got him on the left side. Watch the play he makes on this ball. I'm telling you, he almost threw out Mookie. Yes, he almost did, and Mookie can run. I think they're going to check and see if he's all right. Well, that it looked one. like it hit him on the wrist, Bob. Yeah, it did. It missed I, his glove. It got him on the wrist as way he's fooling around oh, out that's there. That's a shame. That's a shame. But I'll tell you, this young man, that was a hard hit ball. And I think, too, as fast as Mookie can run, he swung so hard on that ball, sort of falling away. That delayed him a little bit. Well, it got him on the left wrist, so yeah. it isn't going to hurt his right arm. That's, we look now at the, There's your boy, Jamie Allen. Jamie Allen. Allen. If he gets into the game, folks, you folks are going to see, you're going to see a right-hand version of Alan Rabosky. He's the designated hitter that they bring in for about three innings, and he'll tell you to get in. Well, you've already seen it. If you haven't and you missed it, why, then uh, you'll see it perhaps. We hope not because of the injury to this young man. I think he should be all right with the ball appeared to have hit him on the left wrist, didn't it, Robbie? Yeah, hit him right below the glove. I'll say this, Mookie hit it hard. That, you know, it took a funny hop on uh, Vasquez. That's why he, he wasn't able to field it. Well, one out. Mookie on first. He might be running a little bit, too. Hits are even at 4-4. They'll have to obviously rule that a base hit. And now Chuck McLean standing in. And uh, Chuck fly to center, line to second. Mookie. Yeah, Mookie's like Peters. He can run. I don't know how many he stole on the season, but I'll check here. All right. I'll be like 33. That isn't bad. For some players, that's a career. <laughs> Van Beaver had... 46, so they got a couple of steals. Oh, they there. caught him in the act of a walking lead, but he just got back. That's a good reaction. Chuck McLean, the batter, has yet to see a pitch. This fella, Vasquez, has a good move. Yeah, too. the college uh, pitchers, the uh, coaches really work with him on that. Uh, there is so much stealing, as I mentioned, that. Uh, they really work on holding that runner close. Popped up. It's going to be a tough play if they don't hustle. Right fielder's there, though. Gilby Brooks. That's the kind of a play where the second baseman tries to decoy a little bit and put his hands down like it's going to be something and a horse around, do something, and try to get you, a first base runner, to think that something's going the other way. Now here we got. Uh, Don Repser, R E P S H E R. From the Gamecocks. See, where is he from? Uh, I'll find it. Oh, they threw it away. Now, Luke, he's on his way. Hey. He may try for coming home. Yeah. They're waving him off. Here comes the throw. They, then they waved him right back. I tell you, he had him coming. And then he came down the line, that third base coach, and decided he better hurry. Get back. We're going to get it picked up now, all yeah. the way around. Yeah, we got a shot on Mookie here. Oh, throw was really bad inside the runner there, and Mookie really took off. You know, that ball went way down the line. And I'll tell you, <laughs> he'd had a shot at home. Well, well, they're waving him right to there. Now, all of a sudden, that ball's picked up by that first baseman. That right fielder, Hubie Brooks, made a great recovery and hit his cutoff man and stopped him. So it's a two-base throwing error, and here's Rex. Now, I want to tell you something. That's a big, big play right there. 
Well, with two out, if he gets the guy out, it doesn't hurt him, but that guy on third is a lot closer. Well, the thing is, the base hit or the errant play can get him in where it couldn't have gotten him in from first. That's, That's right. The, the odds, of course, shift on. That's one of the great things about baseball, the shifting odds on each pitch, each number of outs, how far you are, what the score of the game is. No, he said, no swing. Now we have a two ball, one strike count. You take a look. This is the toughest thing for an umpire to call. That's why they asked the other guy. What do you think? I thought he broke his wrist. All right, but he's and still I'm, up I'm, there. I'm a Jocko Conlon, man. He's looking <laughs> at it in Arizona. Jocko says, to heck with that. Uh oh, hey. That slam deep, it's right at Michael. Right at him. They're knocking on the door, but they can't get through. So the inning showed no runs, a hit, an error, and one left. And we have now finished five and a half innings of play, and it's one to nothing in favor of Arizona State. Going right at it. He trails by the run that scored in the third inning in a multiple action play that had everybody standing. They've set a new attendance record here tonight, all time. Fly ball, shallow left field, breaking off McLean to his left and over. One out. That'll bring up now the shortstop, Mike Henderson, who's had two hits. And one of the hits, this third one, was involved in the play that brought in the run. With two down, Rick Peters hit a bloop single to right, and he then stole second base. Well, Mike Henderson then singled to left, and then it all started. As Peters came to third, he stopped because the left fielder McLean fired the ball in quickly. The third baseman grabbed it, turned and saw that he had no play at third on Peters. He then threw to first to try to get the runner Henderson, who had gone around too much. And the Peters still held third. Then first baseman Hinkle threw the ball up to Van Beaver, who bobbled the ball. When he bobbled it, nope, ball free. When he bobbled it, Peters broke for home. Van Beaver picked it up and threw to first, and they tagged the runner at first base and got him out, but not before Peters scored on what was ruled a fielder's choice. And it stands one to nothing, Arizona State, just that much. It's no runs, four hits for the Gamecocks, and for the Sun Devils, one run on four hits. And there is ball four to Mike Henderson. And that is the first base on balls in this ball game. Amazing. These two guys have been sharp. Now here's the designated hitter, Jamie Allen, being talked to down here on the left. And uh, Jamie fly, struck out and fly to right. Stop there by John Long. And, uh, Arizona's got Larry Eiler up. Uh, left hand, they're keeping everybody a little loose. Ready. One thing about using designated hitter uh, Allen. Warm him up a little bit here and there. And <laughs> bring him in whenever they want it. Ball one and strike two here. One down. Runner at first, Mike Henderson. We are in the sixth inning. You know, Babe Ruth could have been a designated hitter and pitch. Could he have? Oh, that would have been beautiful, wouldn't it? He just set every record in the book. Jumps to short. Second base one. And a double dip. A 6 4 3 double play. I tell you, Bob, they made that pretty. That was an easy double play for those guys. Yep. There no hands ups about that. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And so we go now into the seventh inning. And the score, Arizona State 1 and South Carolina. Here we go now into the seventh inning. Designated hitter Steve King. 
Both times a slide out to right field. Steve King's a senior from Wilmington, North Carolina. Carolina at one time used to turn out a ton of baseball players for the big leagues. I think California latest count began to do it. There was a time when Texas and Oklahoma controlled. Oh, it. it's tight game. Tight game. Going, going. Oh, Kiss my. it goodbye. Oh, baby, he hit that one, Bobby. Wow, that really went out of here. Look at that crowd, the greeting. Can he get through the score? <laughs> that looked like Mazeroski coming yeah. up. One thing about college ball, whatever one, here, here's a picture of it, Bob. That was it in wheelhouse. Yeah, he wasn't? got all of that, baby. He can't hit him any. That's the one that went 800 feet. It went down the bank and all yeah. the way to the road down there. That's his fifth home run of the season and his third of this series. Steve King, that's why he's a dh -er. I think that's what I heard him say, third of the series. Nah, he ain't hitting. Nah, huh? check it. Let's nah, double check it. I, I thought I heard him say third of the series, and if uh, if I heard incorrectly, why well, I heard incorrectly. That's we'll why get it I'm correct. here to keep you straight. That's what I want you to do. No. What did he do? Third RBI of the series. Third RBI of the series and his first home run first of the series. Home. All right. Well, we got a tie game anyhow, one to one. And did he get all of that one he wanted? That was the. Uh, Fifth hit of the ball game, so South Carolina's tied it, and John Hinkle with a double and a fly to center. How often after a long home run do you see the pitcher get in trouble, Robbie, in college baseball? Does that occur or not? Well, it occurs in the big leagues. <laughs> I know it does, but it I might mean, be a little scared to throw another one in there. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, there was no doubt about it when he hit it, it oh was Tremola. Jamie Allen's back down in the bullpen warming up again. Where did you say Steve King was from? Wilmington, North Carolina. I think that's where the ball was <laughs> headed when, I, when it left the park. If that's south. <laughs> Three and two. Fly ball right field. Hubie Brooks. The wind got it. Has Hubie got it? He's got it, but is he hurt? My goodness. He holds on to the ball. He's all right. What a play. All right, let's look at it again. That wind's really blowing out yep. that way, and it's carrying that ball. It's not quite the catch Mookie made, but it was still a good play. Holy Toledo. Now here is Bart Murphy. Murphy. Standing in, game tied 1-1 here in the seventh inning. The Gamecocks of South Carolina, the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Bart Murphy. Boston, Massachusetts. We already brought mm -hmm. that up once. We've given Boston too much time tonight here. Well, Except that there was an incident in Boston. Uh oh, 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 that's not a base hit. That's right Oops. smack dab in the line. <laughs> you got the pitcher's eye. <laughs> line right at him. They're playing him a little shallow. That'll bring up Johnny Long now. Every time I say Johnny Long, I want to give my age away because I want to talk about a guy who was an orchestra leader by the name of Johnny Long. <laughs> and then when I tell you that, I am giving my age away. You Johnny know, Long. The Gamecocks have hit three run on the button this quarter here. This yes, they have. And they got one run for it. Long uh, hit a bloop in the third. We're in the seventh inning. The visiting team at bat, South Carolina. Chopped towards second baseman Horner. On to Nyman. And the side is retired. A run on a booming homer by Steve King. We have gone through six and a half innings of play here at Omaha, Nebraska. And the score is now tied one and one season that is four in regular collegiate season play and his first in the series and you got to believe it feels good to him because he had only had one hit and was hitting 071 when he changed that one there's a check swing popper second baseman has it Bob Horner retired one away in the seventh inning for Arizona State score tied one to one 22 catcher Chris Bando. 
This is the ninth time that Arizona State has been to the College World Series. And all of them here, of course, in Omaha. I think he had mine in mind right there, Mr. Bando, of uh, making this a two to one game. Oh, oh, that's hit deep. And Kiss said goodbye. He had it in mind, all right. He just got it the second swing. Now it's a two to one game. And here comes the crowd from Arizona State to meet Mr. Bando. Boy, that win. That ball was hit a ton. That win is something. Here we go on the replay. Something inside, and I'll tell you, he got it just like King got his. Wasn't quite as high, but it jumped out of here as quick. That is the ninth for him of the, of the season and his first in the series, and Arizona State now leading. His brother had to have played here, didn't he? Oh, yeah. He was a college World Series for Arizona State. There's been a number of them play here that's gone in the big league. Reggie Jackson, of course, uh, Rick Mundy. And uh, Stevie Michael. Fred Lynn had a great college World Series. He was with uh, Southern California. Mm -hmm. Michael had a triple taken away from him by center fielder Mookie Wilson. Two balls in the strike. That ball hit off by Jim Lewis was really outside of the ball struck by Michael. Probably the uh, second, well, really hardest hit ball of the game. He really, Lewis, has been tough. He's only walked one, struck out five. We have a three and zero oh count here now to Stevie Michael. If my memory is correct, when I read properly, this is the first time South Carolina has been in the. World Series. No, they were here no, in 75. Here in 75? Yeah. Came in second That's to correct. Texas. They finished second to Texas. Yeah. There's a base hit to right. By Michael. Now the Gamecocks are getting a lot of action in their bullpen. Numbers 27 and 20. Yeah, Scott Thomas is the left hander and Randy March is the right hander. Now Randy March is the young man that you'll see uh, later on. He's a young man that came out of Harrisburg on a football scholarship in that territory of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and in and around there, and uh, just outside of it. Elizabethville. Elizabethville, and... Well, they're talking this over. There's a couple of shots off Lewis, so... Cooney Reigns is out there. He's got uh, that Mars in the bullpen. He won't hesitate, of course, to bring him in. He's had quite a year. He's been 14 and 0 for them, and he was a football player that just finally came out for baseball. And on top of which, Robin Roberts, he was voted the outstanding player in uh, college baseball. College baseball pitching wise, anyhow, as he won the Lefty Gomez Plate Award, which is a big award they make every year. Last year, won by Floyd Bannister. Of now the Houston Astros, two years ago, won by Bannister. Lefty Gomez, shot towards second. There's one, no on the other, and into the dugout, which will get him up into second base. So you will give uh, Nyman first base on a four side. I thought Ben Bever could have handled that himself this time. He looked yeah. like he could have tagged the runner. Yeah. Yeah. Got away from it. Yep. So uh, take another look at it there while we're getting the scoring down. Batter, for 17, third baseman, Brad Humphrey. I don't know why he didn't. You know, he had plenty of time to make the play. Just one of those things got away from him. That's the second time that he's done that at first base. So that error moves Nyman into second, brings up Brand Humphrey, who beat out an infield single. He's one for two. Arizona State leading here, two to one in the seventh inning. 
Well, that's one time that Humphrey tried it. Looked to me like he's trying to hit a home run with just a little ding a ling get that other run in. I think if you get anxious, you want to go downtown, sometimes a little too soon. That's twice. Now, maybe the two strikes, you might just choke up and see if he can work with it a little bit. Yeah, he hit the ball the opposite yeah. field good last night. Right. He had three base hits. Look, his third base coach is trying to say to him, son, just <laughs> work with it a little bit. Well, I tell you, that's not critical. Robin Roberts and I have seen this happen in the big leagues all over the last 30, 40 years, so don't worry about it. It happens in Little League, Pony League, boys baseball, college baseball, and major leagues, wherever they play this game. It just pumps that blood to you. That strikeout is number six. The home run by Bando goes with another base hit, totaling two. There's an error and one left. And now, through seven innings of play, the Sun Devils of Arizona State leading the Gamecocks of South Carolina by the score of uh, two to one. He uh, bounced out twice to first base. After spending 29 to 30 years of broadcasting in the National League, Robin, I always look down at number nine spot. And when I see a team behind <laughs> my run, I look for a pinch batter, and I remember, no, they're playing that designated hitter, and it doesn't work that way. Now it eliminates a lot of those managerial moves. Mm -hmm. Billy Verdon thinks it's harder to manage with the DH than the other because you're tempted to leave your pitcher in sometimes a little long. What do you feel? I believe that's the, one of the real faults with it. You got to be careful with that. One ball, two strikes. It's two to one. South Carolina needs a run to tie. And Basca seems to be catching some fire. That ball's hit deep. Rick Peters is back. One out. We are in the eighth inning. South Carolina now brings up their great second baseman, Mark Van Beaver. He's 0 for 3, twice as fly to left field. They call him Van Bever. He was a big part of that team that came out here in 75. He's a good little ball player. By the way, this Jerry Vasquez, who's pitching, is, uh, was drafted by Texas. Van Bever was drafted also. Yep. Who, who got him? Well, let's there see. There he is. Baltimore, Baltimore. In, in round seven. Mookie Wilson drafted by the Mets. He's playing in this game. Rick Peters is drafted by Detroit playing in this game. Dan Bever we just told you about with Baltimore. Brant Humphreys playing drafted by California. Daryl Jackson is a pitcher and he drafted by Minnesota. Mike Henderson playing, and he's drafted by Milwaukee. That's hit out deep left. Uh, now the wind knocks it down a bit, and up comes uh, Michael. Two down. We are in the eighth, and Mookie Wilson, one hit and three at bats, standing in. to Lou Pavlovich of Collegiate Baseball for a lot of the information that they've given us here about these draft choices and all. Very thoughtful of Lou to take the time to get all that for us. Gee, there have been a lot of guys from College World Series graduates. Fred Lynn, Tom Seaver, Rich Dyer, Dave Kingman, Steve Kemp, Jackson, Bando, Mundy, Umbarger, Winfield. That's a one chopper. And that comebacker puts Mookie away. And I'll tell you one thing, this is some World Series ball game. <laughs> three up and three down. And now we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning and the score. Arizona State two, South Carolina one. And what Arizona State hopes will be their last at bat. And that's hit high, deep left field. Chuck McLean running over for it, has room, and wakes a foul ball grab. One up. Yeah, he hit it good, but the wind really pushed it back. This is the ball you get away with every now and then. A nice high nothing ball, and you got an out with it. Center fielder, 
Rick Peters. Here's uh, Rick Peters, the center fielder. He has a base hit and stole a base. And that's a very big run that he scored back in that third inning. And they'll think and talk about that play a long time in College World Series. There were two away when Rick Peters got a chopping single. He stole second. And then the action got underway when Henderson singled a left. And in a rundown play, they finally got the runner Henderson at first, but Peters scored from third on the fielder's choice. And he scored before the third out was made, and thus that made it one nothing. Foul ball. Oh, he wanted a little of that. Oh, that bat hit the umpire. Oh, my. Did it hurt him? Well, he's limping around a little bit. Yep. Umpires never get hurt, do they? Yes, they don't. I've seen them when they're black and blue. Watch That's the right. way it swings around and hit the umpire right in the leg. Yeah. He's going to be all right. Now, with a score one nothing back in the third, Stevie King hit one 9,000 miles downtown in the seventh inning to tie it up. For South Carolina, but then Bando homered in the seventh, and that's it. Arizona State leading two to one. One out here, Rick Peters the batter, and a ball two strike one count. Base hit to one. Now remember, he stole back in the third inning, and he stole some 47 bases in the regular season. He's a tough man to handle, Rick Peters. And I would have to think, Robin Roberts, that uh, Jimmy Lewis should be most alert here. Leading two to one, they might be really wanting to try to get this guy up a second. He's going to get picked off. He's getting way off there. He better watch out. Jim Lewis, been a beautifully pitched ball game both ways. That's a pop to shallow left. Coming up for it is McLean. You know, Robbie. In all my years of baseball, I can't get used to the sound of ping. <laughs> Can you? Oh, yeah, I've had it all this year. And in fact, I coached a high school team, and we started using them back there. I. But have you ever noticed the major leaguers, they, a lot of them say it'll never work. They just don't like it. <laughs> a major league ball player, you can't convince them of a change. No, I it think it's, I think it's easier to hit with the aluminum bats. I'll tell you, I think it would help the batters really. I think it would too, but I'm afraid it, you wouldn't want to be a pitcher with aluminum bats in the big legs. Would you? No, no, I didn't think you would. Here's Jamie Allen now. 0-4-3. Without trying to root or sound like I'm. Oh, there he, there he goes. What a throw, but no way. And that stolen base is in there. The time to. He really got to jump on Lewis there. Yeah. He stole on the pitcher there. Yeah, there was no way. Take another look at it. See he see what a jump he had there. I'll tell you one other thing, he can run like mad, you know. He, <laughs> he gets out here in a hurry. Yes, they sure do. Huh? Now, one thing, you know, they all wear those hard hats on. Mr. Ricky was a great believer in the hard hat. He invented that. Uh, a gentleman in Pittsburgh uh, invented that hard hat. Mr. Ricky made everybody in the pirate organization wear it, and always at, at every time on the base pass, because there's more danger of being hit there by a thrown ball than one out the plate. This is Jamie Allen, and uh, he's 0 for 3. One ball, two strikes. Now, the thing that I had to chuckle about, all ball players do it. I don't know why, but it's a habit, I guess. Oh, huh. He lit up the lights on Broadway with that pitch. There's seven strikeouts. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. Robin Roberts, there were some great years that you had as we look at the score two to one Arizona State oh, here, and inning to go. It's a great years you had where you lost games one to nothing and were and you won games a lot of them, of course. You couldn't have won 20 games in a season over six seasons without being in that position. But in this case tonight, I think you can probably tell more than anybody what the uh, folks looking in should feel about these two pitchers because neither one deserves to lose. So often in a tight game like this, I always thought the pitcher had an advantage. But the batters are really tight. They're all trying to win it themselves. And a pitcher that can, you're the one that's doing most of the action out there. You're throwing 115, 120 pitches. So really, it's, I think it's to a pitcher's advantage to pitch a crucial game. And as we see, both guys tonight are just sharp as can be. And so often that's why a 
title game is a close game. You got good pitchers going and they're kind of relaxed and the batter he only hits four times. He's still pressing up there. But I think this is a fine example of two good pitchers pitching a crucial game. One of them has to lose and it's a shame but that's part of what it's all about. The, well, winner, the winner goes home happy. That's right and the loser goes home knowing they're the second best team in the college ranks and that might be not all that solace in the world for you but make no mistake about it there's no disgrace to lose this game and uh, it could go either way but right now she stands up two to one Arizona State and uh, they have just uh, an inning left to go if they can get them out McLean Repture and King are the three scheduled batters and there's a rip for a foul Chuck McLean is over three yes Chuck Robin. McLean took a rip at it didn't he, he sure did but you see with the wind blowing as strong as it is to right I got to believe I try to play punch and Judy. Well it's kind of hard to adjust your swing just for okay. one day you I know. Agree. But now, he, you think he's a home run hitter though. No he hit one the other night inside the park. Yeah but the infield was in the outfield and I'm not running <laughs> McLean down I don't mean it that way I know this youngster's got the adrenaline. Well flow. let's, let's check see how many home runs the youngster hit throughout the season oh, but right. he's a doggone fine uh, young man and a whale of a competitor. Five homers. Hit five. I'll say that South Carolina is much smaller than this ballpark. Mm -hmm. yeah. The ballpark in South Carolina. Yeah, much yeah. smaller. In fact, you might hit a home run there. At my age? Yeah. Must be a small park. One down. You know that's only the second strikeout for Vasquez. That was a fastball, and he let her fly. It was out of the strike zone. Uh, McLean chased a bad pitch, but you know this is quite. Can you imagine pitching the ninth inning of the final College World Series game? This Vasquez has hopped up. Look at him. Oh, sure. Almost as much as Jamie Allen. Yeah. Now the losing pitcher up till now is Jim Lewis, and he has seven strikeouts. And that was only the second for Vasquez. And I'll tell you one thing: he isn't looking forward to the guy on deck. He let him up. King, you know, if, if if rupture gets on, King might be going for hello and how do you do <laughs> Charleston, South Carolina, or anywhere in the part of the state. Oh, we got a game going here. It's two to one, Arizona State over South Carolina in as fine a ball game as you'd want to see. One out and on, ninth inning. And this is the last at bat for South Carolina, unless they can tie it up. Look at this. Look at this. By golly, that ball was on the corner. Those yep. umpires are right more than you think they are, Bob. You know that? Sure. Ball one, strike two. Ball two. Now his adrenaline is out there. Jerry Vasquez. He, he won 11. He lost two. He ain't saving anything, is he? No way. Oh, my. He's popping it now. He's figuring that uh, next Monday he'll be in the classroom. <laughs> no, it's all over. I know, but uh, you never know. He might be in the quarter system. <laughs> That's two up and down. That's his third strike out. He got him on a breaking ball, some sort. There. I'll tell you, it was right on the yeah. black too. Well, here's the guy that hit it to tie it up back in the seventh inning. Steve King. Well, they played all year, and here they are. They need one out. Bob. Hey, they're not bringing King up yet. Oh yeah, he's coming up. Where is he? He's standing in the runway there, and loosening up. Here well, he comes. They're waving the right fielder back. The uh, yeah, they ought to play him out of the park. They got the right fielder, Hubie Brooks, going as far back as he can go. He's on the warning track. And here we go. Ball one. Now, if I were uh, Vasquez, I wouldn't want to walk King either. Uh, he's going to smoke him, Bob. He's not going to fool around. He's just going to go with his best and see what happens. Vasquez is walking around out there like Allen. He's yeah. thinking if it works for him, it works for me. <laughs> Pop foul, left side. Let's see if it's playable. Here comes uh, Humphrey the third. It's over. And they have won the championship of the college series. Arizona State has beaten South Carolina in a whale of a ball game, two to one. Look at that crowd. Oh, my. Heartbreak alley for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. And pandemonium breaking loose down there for Arizona State. Yeah, they're a happy bunch, and it's a great thing. Look at the two guys in the outfield. They're wrestling out there. Uh, Peters and Brooks, they're having a great time. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't blame them. And at the same time, my heart goes out for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. 
But it's the example of having to win and having to lose.